Peace to you all in Jesus Christ's name. I pray everyone's having a blessed, wonderful day. And I just want to share what I've been thinking on, probably more so than anything else right now, is just the fact of Jesus Christ coming to die for us. And as with everything with God, it's just something that you can't fully grab, you know, the whole context and all of that. But I just challenge you to to just, think on the fact that God did not have to come and die for us. Um, the fact that if he would have left us to live a godless, sinful life, he still would have been just righteous and loving. But God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God died for us while we were sinners. And... You know, it wasn't when we were good enough, it was when we were bad enough. And the only the only punishment that's pleasing to sin, that takes care of the price of sin, is, of course, Jesus Christ, the perfect begotten Son of God, only begotten Son of God, um, you know, taking on the flesh and becoming sin and being a sacrifice, God's sacrifice to us, or eternal hellfire. So if you look at, you know, hell, of course, burning forever, um, you know, that says a lot about sin, you know, what it means to God, and, and also the fact of, um, you know, what Jesus Christ had to endure at Calvary. And even again, before you even get to Calvary, just, just again, the fact that God chose to save us. And Genesis in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, this is after... Man had had disobeyed God and listened to Satan and ate of the forbidden fruit. Um, God had passed out the judgment, and yet He still He still gave um, word of, of the coming Messiah in Genesis um, three fifteen, and and that's just amazing because of course God knows everything that's going to happen, but this is here you know right in the the middle of judgment. Um, you know God is, is saying that I'm going to or restore order. I'm going to get things back to how they were, um, even even in in the act of kicking Adam and Eve out, and and now about to be in this this sin state, and Satan being the god of the world, and and things like that. So let's not take God's grace for for granted. Let's not continue in sin that grace may abound. Um, the Father He gave His Son out of out of love, not an obligation. And for Jesus to live every day of his life perfectly as only God can, you know, but still all the stuff he he went through and and put up with, you know, God does that in, in heaven. And, you know, he's not going to overlook sin, but, you know, he sees all that's going on and, and uh, you know, this rebellious world and, you know, man, the world, they just, they hate God. And, you know, that was displayed at Calvary and, and how they, Treated him during his during his life. So, speaking on Calvary, as we look at in the spiritual, because of course in the physical it was the Romans who crucified Christ. So you see the the physicality of the of the whips and the the mocking and the spitting and the crown of thorns and the crucifixion, all of that. You know, but in the spiritual, which is what we're always to look at. You know, Jesus Christ was enduring the Father's wrath. So I ask you to, knowing that God is almighty, just imagine, you know, enduring God's wrath. And even in hell, that's what it is. Like, I think a lot of people think that this is Satan punishing you in hell, like you're in his kingdom. Satan's going to be paying too. And hell is the wrath of God. And for a time, Jesus endured the wrath of God to, to be an atonement for sin. So... The animals in the Old Testament and, you know, the keeping of the, the Mosaic law, you know, it wasn't worthy for for sin. It wasn't a, a just sacrifice that could atone for it. Only paying for our sins in eternal hellfire is or, or the Lamb of God. You know, he's called the Lamb of God because he was sacrificed for us. He, he, he's God, Jesus Christ is God's sacrifice to mankind and... And the perfect Lamb of God, he could take on 
he put sin on on his on his body and 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 God's wrath was poured on on him to to pay for our sins. Any and all who will believe on him, you know, they'll be saved. So God gave us life through Jesus Christ. He gave us another option rather than just, you know, living that godless life and going straight to hell because, you know, without a savior we would have we wouldn't have been saved. And without without a savior we couldn't have been reconciled back to God. Everything that Adam lost during the fall, and Jesus Christ was stored, and you know when He returns, you know we'll get all that back and more to to eternally be with Him in New Jerusalem, and and so I just I just challenge people to just think that you know every sin, um, you know that that whip was was for for sin that that crown of thorns put on His head, you know that nail, and, and His and his wrists and all those things, that's for sin, the the drugs, the, the witchcraft. You know, Jesus knew there's going to be people, a lot of people, who would never even profess him, but all they had to do was confess him, and, and he still died for that. You know, if Hitler would have confessed Christ, you know, all those sins were paid for, all the sins of the world. He said the only sin he wouldn't forgive is, is blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. You know, to deny Christ, you know, you're denying your salvation. You're denying God. He's God and Savior. So, you know, let's not walk in sin so that grace may abound. You know, while we're, you know, we're not without sin. You know, Christ is in us and he's overcome sin and death. So it's not of our own self-strength to, to get out of sin. It's our reliance and sufficiency is on, on Christ Jesus. And, you know, we need to make him known. Um, the Bible says that people will know will know them by their fruit, and so not only as we examine ourselves, you know, other people are seeing us. They'll see that you know you're no longer of the world, and you're always peaceful when it's a time to panic, and always calling on God and talking about Him and things like that. And it's not an act; it's it's genuine, and that's because Christ in you is being manifested, and and that's the the fruit of a true believer. You know, as he's working out his or her own salvation with fear and trembling, as they're following the Lord and being led by the Spirit, you know, that will be seen. So um, the movie, The Passion of the Christ, I really like that movie. It's very controversial because of how how brutal it is. But I like it because I believe it gives a great depiction of how um, how it really went down at Calvary. You know, this is something we cannot grasp. Um, how brutal it was, just like any characteristic of God, you can't fully grasp it, but you know to you know to take a look at it from the passion of the Christ um, you know from that and just reading the word, you know, I just don't see how anyone would want to um you know crucify Christ back to the cross by willingly living in sin and it's just a matter of of the fact that you know do you really know and love God because those who do. And who are really trying to follow him, you know, we blow it too, but that's not their will. It's not going to be any I'm not perfect excuses and, and God knows my heart and things like that. You know, your will will be to, to serve God and, and, to, and to please him. And, you know, it's not works righteousness. And a lot of people will say that's works righteousness. But the Bible says that in the flesh it's impossible to please God. You know, it's it's God working in us, his works being manifested. Faith without works is dead. So with God working in us on the inside and the outside, you know, that pleases him. You know, he'll give us the words to praise him. He'll tell us what to do and, you know, our obedience and things like that. And that's, that's pleasing to God just as our disobedience displeases him. And, you know, we let him down. So I follow after the spirit and, you know, just think about that love. You know, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. You know, that's love. And, you know, for people giving up on love, and, you know, they, they've never had it because if they had it, they would know God. God is love, and he's commanded us to love our brethren and our enemies. And and God has never given up on us. And, and you know, we, whether ignorant or habitually, um, you know, God just hasn't given up on us, and 
you know, and, and he is love. So let's not give up on love because God is love. And, you know, again, that's, that's my main message for this um, video, just to just to really think about the fact alone of Jesus Christ coming to die for us. You know, he's the eternal begotten son of God, the only begotten son of God, and he's always in fellowship. He's always been in fellowship with the Father, with the Holy Spirit from eternity past. So just think for that time, he had to endure the Father's wrath. And even from the Father's perspective of pouring out his wrath on, on his only begotten son. You know, the the members of the Godhead, you know, just working out the plan of salvation and that was the the only only way for us to be saved is um a perfect being, an infinite being paid an infinite price of, of sin. So, you know, a lot of people they they really miss the mark with you know, why would a father do that to a son and, and things like that. It's because he loves us. You know, if 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 he didn't, you know, these same people they would be mad that we were under Adam and going straight to hell. And the only way for us to be saved, reconciled back to God, was was, was through Christ. So we don't have anything to boast about, but you know, God and the glory of the cross. And you know, rather than looking at why would he do that, just be thankful that he did do it. That he's willing to die for us. Jesus said, "No greater love is there than that a man." lay down his life for his friends, you know, that's love. For God to give his only begotten son, that that is love. And it still would have been love if God didn't come and save us, if he just, um, you know, let us pay for our sins and a godless life and an eternal hellfire. But, again, to, to give his only begotten son, that's love. And, you know, we need to grasp what we can of that and, I just want, want to invite everybody out there to, if you haven't, make Jesus Christ your Lord and your Savior. And if you've already professed Christ, you know, make sure you, uh, you have also believed in your heart because the Bible says that you must confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. So this is why everybody who says, Lord, Lord, is entering into the kingdom of heaven. Not many people come in Christ's name, but they're not of him because you know, they didn't have a genuine profession of Christ in their heart. So it's worship with their lips and, and not in their heart. It's impossible to please God without faith. So we have to genuinely genuinely believe. So then we will we'll receive his spirit. We'll become that new creature. We'll have spiritual discernment and all those things that um, a lot of professed Christians are missing. And, and these are essential to salvation. It comes with it. It's so much that comes with salvation. It's not just the fact of, you know, now I'm saved from, from hell, and it's definitely not now I'm saved to live in sin. You know, we're overcoming sin with Christ because we're joined heirs with Christ, and he overcame sin in the world. So we just need to give our lives to Christ and, and just thank him for who he is. Just thank him for who he is, God alone, and and just praise him. And, you know, once you can really thank on what he did just for to how much he loved us, I mean, that there's always something to be thankful for because God's around and his power doesn't cease and, you know, his love is everlasting and he was willing to do that. So that's why I made this video to, of course, give glory to God and just um, get something for people to think about that Jesus Christ did this for us and, you know, thank, thank God, each member of the Godhead, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost because each play a, a role in salvation. So so I'm just thankful for God and just wanted to give him glory and send this message. And I just pray everyone have a blessed, wonderful week out there. And God bless you all.